This is the closet organizer system that we were building out in our last video. We're going to go through, we put it together with pocket holes and we made the shelves and rails all to be locked in with pocket holes from the back side. But I want to talk about something else because when we got to the floor trim I noticed something that I never see people talk about on these trim videos. We're going to look into that. If you watched our last video, you saw us painting this cabinet that we made and we put it together with old, just old scrap CDX plywood and some finished pine that we had. It's nothing fancy. It's going to be in a closet. It painted up real nice. Painted up pretty good. We put a gloss coat on it, but it kind of dulled down with that sprayer. And something I wanted to show you on this where we put it together with pocket holes. I've got a cross rail here for a short rod. Then we've got a long shelf here, but it's not going to be supporting anything because your cross rail here and your end rail, they're all screwed into blocking on the wall. So they're going to be supporting the rods. I've got a rod over here as an example. It's not going to be that high. These has little hooks over the top of them that they're supposed to lay on top of the rail. Then you put two screws. But I don't like how high that is up in there. You have to reach up in there to put a hanger. So I'm basically going to straighten that tab out and drop them down to the bottom of our cross rail. Of course, this one doesn't matter where you put it. But this will all get painted in the end. I've got a few fresh pocket hole screws that I put in. But I want to show you how it was put together. This cross piece doesn't look very steady, sturdy. It's hooked on the end here, which is supported. And it's up to that rail with pocket hole screws. But another thing that's going to make it is, if you'll notice, the back rail is only three inches. And the front rail on each of these is three and five eighths. So when you're using this plywood, it's got that ugly raw edge on it. Let's see if I can pop one up here. You can see that raw edge. I didn't want that showing on top of the shelves. So what I decided to do was make my front rails three and five eighths wide. So when my plywood is laying in there flat, it sits on top of the back rails for support. And it also pocket holes into this front rail. And it will actually support this front rail even when you put a lot of weight on it. It's pretty sturdy, but it's going to be supported because you're going to have those pocket holes from this plywood and this plywood sits on the rails on either side. So you're getting strength from this, strength from your end attachment points, and that's going to hold this long rail solid. It's less than six feet, so you know, we're not worried about it having too much weight on it anyway. It's going to be supported really well. The reason I'm making this video is not because our, of our closet system, really. I'll show that in a later video when we talk about how we're going to deck it out and put drawers in these cabinet holes here but um, one thing I want to talk about is you see people doing floor trim videos all the time and this is just simple floor trim that we had and they put it on the wall and whether you're doing a mitered corner or whether you're doing a coat corner nobody ever discusses the biggest issue I think out of all of it is not whether you're doing a cope or a miter which that works great Coat corners work good if you got a good straight corner. And miters work good if you got a good straight corner. But most houses that are done, they put the sheetrock up horizontally. When you get down here close to the floor, you have a bevel on the bottom of the sheetrock. It's just slight. This is half inch sheetrock. But if you put this up against the bevel on the bottom, you'll see there's a big gap up here at the top. So when you put the 
floor trim on, the floor trim lays in at an angle. So when you, let me see if I can get set. So whether you're doing a cope or a miter, you wind up with a, no matter how straight your cope is, you wind up with a gap at the bottom. And of course this is just a junk piece that I made a cope out of, it's not a very good cope. But you can see, it's good and straight, but it doesn't line up because you've got this bevel on the bottom of the sheetrock. And what I've seen done in the past, and nobody ever talks about it in the videos, they talk about getting your copes and miters, but they don't talk about this is half inch thick sheetrock. And this floor trim is half inch thick, just happens to be, not all floor trims half inch, but this is half inch. So I take some little pieces of scrap, I just cut them off the ends of some little scrap pieces. They're half inch wide, but I cut them different thicknesses because the floor is different, the floor gap is different from wall to wall, so you can't cut the same one. I cut a few that were a half inch thick, but they were too thick. And just kind of slide them in there. That one needs something on top of it. Put a little piece in, and that gives you your half inch. See, look, it sticks out a good eighth of an inch more than the bottom of that. So if you nailed your trim straight against the wall, you'd have this big bevel. So when you put those pieces in, and you put it in there flush, you can slide your cope or your rider in. It's got a little gap. Like I said, this is a just a rough piece that I had laying. It's not a very good cope. But you can put it in that corner, and it tightens that corner up nicely. And when you nail this trim on, where you've got that backing piece behind it, it makes it good and solid. Now you do is you just drop a couple in here and there. Drop one in the corner, a couple in the middle, and then one on the end. And that'll hold your floor trim out. And that works really well. On some rare occasions, you might wind up with where they've got 5 8 sheetrock on the walls. It might be thicker and sticking out. I don't think anybody ever finishes down to the floor, so there's always going to be that bevel. You just find the appropriate shim to put in there behind it and I've got them somewhere around the studs I've got a shim about everywhere there's a stud so I can put a nail on the top and bottom it usually works out pretty good let me get a piece worked up and measured and I'll put this corner in and show you what I'm talking about so there's our coat joint I use the trim lock tool to make sure it's cut clean across I just used it as a gauge I didn't actually cut it I cut it on the miter saw but I just had to cope this one little part. I mitered down to the OG and then I cut the OG out with a little coping saw. Now I prefer cope joints in corners. Outside corners, it's great. You can miter. You have to fiddle with them to get them to look halfway decent. But inside corners, just about always go with a cope, even on crowns. I've got this piece cut. Let's put it in there and see how it feels. Now keep in mind, my floor trim on the wall is still bowed out the top a little bit because there's a little mud in there. It's kind of wide. But you can slide this coat joint in. And it goes right over top. Push it in here. I'm not my cabinet over where it's supposed to be. Like I said, it's a little wide at the bottom. But I know it's got a perfect 90 corner on it. So the top's held out just slightly. But it's a good enough cut to when you stand back from it. Can't even really tell it's there. When the caulking and around the top of the trim and the nail holes is done, you'll never even see it. It's a simple, easy way to join a corner. And made a lot easier when you put the little trim blocks in behind it. I just cut random lengths of waist trim and stick them in my pocket. That way, you really only need them at the corners. That's the only place it matters. You don't have to put them along the length. But I do just to try to keep it 90 degrees to the wall because it will sink back in about an eighth of an inch when you nail it. That's pretty straight across through there. My shoes are squeaking on the floor. But it worked out pretty good. I got a little bit more trim to do in this closet. Finish my shelves and hang the rods up. 
we'll have more on that later and put a few pocket hole screws, screws in and do my finished trim painting and caulking this, this thing will be a wrap you saw me using my trim lock tool a while ago, I love this thing it fits in your apron, it's made by Bench Dog Tools got it on Amazon, it makes circles it does all kinds of stuff, I don't even know what all it does but it's really great for setting your reveal like on window trim and stuff here's a door trim, I don't have any trim on it yet but you can use this gauge, I think it's a quarter of an inch just put it on your door and it gives you a quarter of an inch reveal line but not only that, up here in the corner you can put, see it's beveled on both sides so you can put that raised portion there up against the top and now you know where your miters need to be on your trim when you cut it. So that shows you your 45 degree miter. It's always going to show you a reveal no matter how you set it. So you can put your miter, I always put my miter piece across the top first then measure the corners down to the floor. I usually miter the side pieces too and then just flip them upside down and mark them at the top edge of that miter trim piece that we put on top but it's, it's a pretty cool, this is a cool tool I've used it a lot it has scribe lines, even up here it has a scribe line that matches these lines down here it's got to cut out for your pencil and I don't know, it does, it's another kind of jig too, it makes circles too but I don't know what all it does, it's got some really good instructions with it so it's pretty cool when you're doing stuff like this just carry it in your pocket that's a must have when I'm carrying things around and I carry this too this is a trim gauge I guess that's the brand of it but I've had this thing for years it's got a level in it but it's cool it's got uh, inches on one side and it's got uh, whatever that is metric for our European friends that never learn fractions but uh, it's pretty handy You can set it wherever you want to. You can set it for trim also. Set it for a quarter of an inch. But it just you just tighten lock it down where you need it. You can set your reveal on doors and windows, whatever you need to. If you're scribing, it's good for scribing stuff. I think it had it as an eighth of an inch on the edges. So you can scribe, just lay it on the edge of something and scribe an eighth of an inch. It's cool. It just fits in your pocket. It's handy to have. You put that in your pocket. Put this in your pocket. When you use one of these, you really need to carry a, a regular pencil because it fits in these cutouts really good. When you carry these big blocky carpenter's pencils, they, they don't fit in there very well unless you got it really sharp to a point. But it's handy. Here's an example here, when I was talking about your reveal line. It shows your reveal line and you can put it up here. And it shows you exactly where your miter needs to be when you're cutting your trim. That's just putty, I've got the nail hole there, I've not finished them yet. But you use this before, of course, before you put the piece up. Then you measure from this corner down to the floor and you can get your length of your side pieces. I always nail the top one on first, that way you get it good and level and square. Here's what I was talking about outside miters. If you put your blocks in behind this piece of trim on the corners, when you stick your outside miter together, you really don't have to do anything to it. It comes out pretty straight true. If, you, if, you, if your miter saw is good and true, this outside miter will be good and true if you put your little blocks in, unless they've just made this really fat on the corner bead. And you can see it curves back in here and it curves back in here slightly where that's got a really fat corner bead but that miter still worked out perfect. Well that's my take on miters and coping. There's thousands of videos out there where they show you how to miter the corner and cope the corner and people argue all day long about which is better. But to make both of them better you can put your little filler blocks in behind it. It just takes a couple of minutes. You've always got scrap laying around when you're doing trim work. Put those blocks in 
and those corners will square up just about every time whether you're doing a cope joint or a miter joint in, inside corners it works out pretty good now that works on floor trim just because you've got that bevel down there on the of course on the ceiling trim when you're doing crown molding it doesn't really matter because you're missing the corners when you're doing crown molding but there's a whole lot more tricks to that and we won't get into that here we just want to talk about these bottom corners even if you got really detailed trim it still makes your corners look better when you do a good nice tight cope on it i appreciate you guys watching i'll show you more about this closet in another video as we get closer to being done with it we don't don't like much i couldn't reach the top of it i had to make me a little step of course i made it out of pocket hole joinery and everybody can see this face frame has no nails or pins in it it's held on with pocket holes works really good i like it you can see them from here but there's going like i said there's going to be baskets inside of these shells so you'll never see the ugly plywood you can't really see the ugly plywood from the side i filled in most of the big holes that were in it this is CDX plywood, probably the worst plywood you can get your hands on. That's what I had and that's what we're using. I'm not going to throw it away. And it worked really well for what this is. And we get clothes in here and get this closet filled up. You'll never be able to tell that it wasn't the cabinet you bought out of a store. They'll go really nice and we built them ourselves so we can be proud of that. I've also got these rods here that I got off of Amazon and they felt just a little janky they don't feel the greatest in the world they go inside of each other it does come with center supports I don't know what I've done with it, it comes with a center support you can put on it if you got them stretched all the way out we're just going to do this little short run with it it should be fine we are going to drop it down though so we can get to the hangers easier because it just seemed too high to me. It's crooked right now because you got a wide piece of trim and it's sitting on a narrow piece of trim there. That's why another reason we're going to drop it down to the bottom of the trim. Make it look just a little better. We'll let you know how these go because they're kind of cheap. We got them off Amazon. We'll link them in Amazon anyway just in case somebody's looking for a simple closet rack that's extendable. I think these goes out to maybe six foot or something like that but we're just going to have them around 50 inches so that'd be just fine but thanks for watching everybody thanks for riding along with me on another one of my little crazy projects and if you're not subscribed to our channel you want to see all kinds of different content we do different things we film just everyday day-to-day -day life and talk about it uh, subscribe we try to have at least one video out every week we try to and uh, if you like the content, like it. And if you don't like it, uh, tell us why. Um, we're open to criticism as well as we are praise. We'd rather have praise. But thank you guys for watching. And stay clean, everybody.